and got hey, it. Hey, Dr. Chasos, how are you doing this morning? I'm, I'm doing fine. How are you, Keith? I'm doing really good. And so what we're trying to do today is talk about the gig economy. But first, I want to welcome everybody who's on LinkedIn. And so hello, everybody. Welcome to the Question Guy podcast. And it's good to have you with us today. So let's get into the conversation. Oh, uh, so first things first, Dr. Chaz, introduce yourself and talk to us a little bit about where you're coming from. But then we got to get right into the conversation because there are so many questions I got <laughs> about what the gig economy is and how it's working. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Say hello to our audience. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I do two things. I do leadership coaching and I train workers on how to find work in the 20th century in what's now called the gig economy. Okay, so there's a lot to that. So I had to do a little bit of Google, Google food, a little bit of Google research. And Google is telling me that this is a paradigm shift on what jobs are really out there and what jobs you can get. And so give us first of, you know, a layman's, you know, a layman's understanding of what that means. What is the gig economy? Um, let's start with, forget about looking for a job, look for work. Okay. Beca because the traditional uh, situation that our parents and grandparents lived in, where you worked for a company for many years and got benefits and then retired and got a pension, et cetera, that's pretty much going away. Companies won't pay for health insurance and other benefits. Mm -hmm. So it's short-term work. It's a project here, a project there, um, a contract for six months. It's short term. So that's it's a gig rather than a job. <clears throat> so what you're looking at is in order to respond to that, in order to navigate this new kind of workplace, um, you have to be taught, which is what I do, how to market yourself. What's your brand? How do you define it? How do you articulate it? And then who do you sell it to? Who would be interested in your skill set for whatever, a, a short-term gig, uh, a project, part-time work, um, a company that can utilize or an organization that can utilize your skill set and have what you do help them monetize their business, either save them or make them money. Well, let's get all let's get into all that in time. Let's kind of take a few steps backward and say, I don't. Well, I'm going to first. I'm going to be the first person to say I don't like this. Um, I don't like the fact that there is a new shift in how, how work is, and that's what you called it. I think you called it work and not a work. job. How work is working. Um, you know, I'm a little bit older in years, so I kind of like the idea of. Uh, going to a company, applying for a company, whatever it is, you know, my background for the past decade or so has been in higher ed, um, feeling secure, getting that paycheck, getting that insurance benefit, and getting all those kind of um, tangibles, Perks. I guess, yeah, what benefits, tangible benefits, um, including maybe a t-shirt or two. I wouldn't mind that as well. And I've got a few t-shirts from previous, you know, higher ed employers. So what's creating this, this, this shift? Do you, is there, is there a clue? What's, is there anything that's saying, because it sounds like it's good for the company, but it's just not good for the person. Um, yeah. So what, what's created this shift? Do you, is there any, not, any background story to that? I, a number of factors. Uh, one is that uh, for a number of years, a couple of decades, um, there's been a shift and the, the CEOs and the C-level heads of companies, um, the, more, uh, the more money the company makes, uh, the more money they make, the mm -hmm. more their bonuses are. In an organization, in a company, your biggest expense is labor. So if you can cut your costs there, you will, which means hiring people on a freelance basis, which means um, outsourcing to other countries where the wages are a lot less, which means robots. So um, if I'm a CEO, 
I put more money on my pocket at the end of every quarter if I keep my expenses down. So I will try to find any way to not hire people, or if I have to hire people, hire them short term, no benefits, this is the deal, and that's it. More money in my pocket. So uh, there's a great inequality there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it does, uh, the advantage is obviously to the company and to the rich folks that run it. And their bonuses are just incredible. And it is very much on the backs of who people who used to be loyal employees who can't keep a job now through no fault of their own. So that's one of the factors that, that is affected. Also, companies are looking at it and saying, well, it doesn't make sense to give them benefits. Um, I'll hire them instead of 40 hours. I'll hire them for 32. And then I'm good. I'm fine. And too bad for you. You, you know, you're out of luck. Um, so in response to that, people have to look at um, the, the corporate loyalty is gone. So if they're not loyal to you, you can't be loyal to them. This is part of the reason unions are rising once yeah. again, because uh, employees, they, they have or workers, they have no options. The companies will exploit them. Um, so they're banding together, which is what unions do and saying, hey, there are certain things we do have to have and you have to loosen the purse strings a bit and take care of us because we're taking care of you. So for, um, I have a tech background. So I've, I've been teaching IT uh, and now I've been teaching over the past five years, Azure Cloud. So a lot of your big companies, Microsoft, Amazon, Google have cloud-based platforms, okay? Um, which does a lot for the dollar. Um, you, you can go and deploy uh, virtual systems, cloud-based systems, rather than having to buy the infrastructure, which is talking to a little bit of, as to what you're saying, uh, reducing the upfront cost and even some of the, the maintenance cost and letting somebody else handle that and then deploy your services, pay as you go kind of thing. And so we just pay for what we need. It reminds me of the Liberty Insurance uh, commercials I see on YouTube. You only pay for what you need. Um, and there's also the piece about automation. And so we could automate a lot of services that don't necessarily have to be deployed to a, you know, a human labor market. And so I see that readily easily. That's re These are readily easily things companies, people in companies can do to, to decrease that cost. But now you're, now you're hitting uh, the employees purse strings, you know, people kind of depended on uh, insur insurance is expensive. And so for companies to take that away or to kind of split the cost with that and with themselves and, and the employee, um, you know, that kind of hurts. It takes away the morale of working for a company. Yep. Um, but this may not be the, co the conversation to talk about morale because what we really need to find out is uh, how do I get a job then? How do I find work? Because you talked about marketing, you talk about branding, you, 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 you're, look, you're talking about people as if they were their own company uh, or their own nature of a company. Is there, can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, exactly that, you, you hit it. You okay. are essential, you're essentially your own business now. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad um, I got something right. So how does that work? Um, it's a paradigm shift. Um, it's a different way to think about yourself in the workplace rather than loyal employee who works hard and stays late and comes in sick, et cetera, et cetera, um, and will be rewarded at the end. Um, let's start with a new baseline. Companies don't care about you. The loyalty isn't there. Well, I don't yes. like that word. <laughs> so, uh, so stop looking into the past. Okay. So whatever you do for work, you have to think of yourself as a business, I think, as a business and that you're always selling. Everyone's in sales. So you do your job and you're also selling. What is it you're selling? That's defining the brand. What makes you special? who in your target market or target audience in your industry would pay for your skill set? Oh, you do this, this, and this, we'll pay for that. How soon can you start? Um, so your the loyalty isn't to the company. Um, the loyalty is essentially to yourself and how you can be of service to people in your industry. 
given what you know and given you're constantly upskilling. Like we need, not only do we need these three, three things, we now need a fourth thing, good. I'm getting a certificate in that, good. If you can do the, the cloud computing, if you have a certificate in that, we can hire you to do that. So you're always learning and growing um, and you're not dependent on that one employer as was true in the past, who can lay you off at any time for any reason in many states um, because the company merged or they don't like your face anymore or uh, there was a downturn in the economy. So you're not dependent on that one single employer. Now you have clients and people who will pay you for your skill set. Um, and they can be all over the world in some cases, depending on what you do. So there's always there are always income streams coming in. And well, you're gonna have well, well, I want to get to that because I think that that's an important piece to this conversation. But what you just said now really adds value to the individual. Um, at first, because at first it seemed like you took all of the uh, the power away, you know, the gig economy is taking power away from the individual, you know, they don't have this dependable um, employer that they know that they can go to because you said, you know, you could get fired, you could get laid off. If I don't even like, and this is your words, and if I don't even like your face, you're gone. I don't know if that's totally true, but I do get the point. Um, but you teach empowerment to the person. So, so what I'm hearing you say is, I'm going to teach you how to market. I'm going to teach you how to brand. I'm going to teach you how to sell. I'm going to teach you how to upskill. I think that was something mm -hmm. that, that, that needs to be communicated or, and taught and practiced. So you are, in a sense, really fostering empowerment to the individual so that yes. they don't have to feel as if they are and I'm at a loss for words, dependent on that one job or dependent on that employer. Yes, so, ex exactly. Can you elaborate? Exactly. It, does, well, it, is, it is about empowering the individual. Okay. It's a, it's a shift in consciousness. I say, I, I, I joke about it. it's a shift in consciousness without the use of drugs. <laughs> You're thinking about how you behave in the workplace. Okay. Um, and then acting on that so that really where you're coming from is how can I contribute to people in my industry? What do I have? What can I deliver that will either save a company money or uh, make them money? And uh, so you're always available to do that. And you're rather than being dependent on that safe harbor of a company, which has gone away, you now have your network and you're constantly working the network and people know and people know what you do and can refer you for work or hire you for work. So there's always money coming in. So um, you're constantly marketing. You have two jobs. One is your job and the other one is marketing yourself, but you're always working. You're never unemployed. There's always money coming in and it all ties into your skill set, which is always growing and improving. Um, and you can ride this out for as long as you want to work. So before we talk about multiple streams of income, which you're, you know, you're hinting to, um, you sent me a, a, an anonymous feedback form. And so this is what people are saying. Um, a, a, mind blown is, is one of the comments on the feedback form. My mind was blown. These are um, the, the I, I, just to, to, for context, these are, um, I, I've been teaching courses uh, on self-marketing okay. through, uh, through the adult education department at Los Angeles Pierce College for about five years and over 1,300 students. At the end of every course, I ask for anonymous feedback, what's working and any suggestions for improvement. So that's what you're reading from are these anonymous assessments. So I, I want people to be anonymous uh, so they feel free to say whatever they need to say. So please. But the only thing you gave me were the positive <laughs> feedbacks, and so I don't know if there I don't know if there are any negatives because mind blown, the, real the, world, real world, you know, skills, um, step by step, how to, and all of these things are just relating to the fact that 
the individuals, the people who have taken your course and have, have found value in it, I'm assuming their lives have been changed because mm -hmm. they now feel empowered. Not only do they feel empowered, um, not as not because that's a good feeling to have, but they also have the how to. They the, you you held their hand, you showed them what to do, you showed them how to do it, and they now have those skills the branding, the marketing, the selling um, of themselves and their value so that they feel that they can not only survive, but thrive in this new gig economy. Yeah. Um, and so that, that in and of itself is gold. So are you reaching people just in your local, you're out in California, right? I'm in Los Angeles, yes. So are you only able to tap into the Los Angeles community or can you reach beyond that because this seems this can't just be a california thing this needs to be a a, a national if not an international thing at some point people need so, to have this value yeah people need to know uh, what you're doing well i i have two books available on amazon i have three courses on linkedin learning on how to find keep and leave a job and those so they are can available. find you on linkedin literally yeah, oh yes on, okay yeah um, so uh, th my work is available to people all over the world and I get fan mail constantly about how people have seen my courses, read my book, really helpful. As far as the courses themselves, the ones I teach through Pierce College, some of the courses are virtual. So I'm able to work with people all over the world in the courses, number one. Number two, I work with private clients and I have clients all over the world. Um, so the reach is global. Um, on this on this work and thank you I uh, it, it does empower people and it gives them hope that's not in the syllabus but they get hope it's a, I didn't I never saw it this way before this is a new way for me to deal with the workplace and give my career a second life um, and just keep going from there and these are practices that they start to use and it becomes second nature for them. And they're always able to get work, which is the point. No theory. These are all practical, relevant, valuable tools that they can use. So it's shifting the conversation they have and then shifting their behavior patterns. And it becomes, this is what I do now. I, I market myself. I can always find work. I grow my network constantly. I upskill constantly. And I don't have to worry about getting laid off by a company because I don't work for a company. I work for me and for my clients. So let's talk about that if we could. One, multiple streams of income, but two, um, if you are then your, your own company and you're not getting you know, a W-2, you're a 1099 employee, um, and that works a little bit differently. So there are some accounting concepts that we don't necessarily have to talk about in this conversation. But do you talk about that in terms of your your course and your communication? Because how they're getting paid then is different if they're if they are only working quote unquote gigs. Yeah, you you have to handle your own taxes. Yeah. Um. You have like any business. What can you write off? You buy you buy equipment. You get it. Learn a new software program. You take a course. These are things you can write off. So. So do you uh, teach it as as like a, like an entrepreneurial endeavor? Okay, because you, you've not it mentioned is, that word before. It is, it, it, it is entrepreneurial, absolutely. And okay. I, I, you know, I, I work this way, and pretty much everyone I know, whether it's formally or informally, works this way. As you get older, you're tired of working for a company. You want to work for yourself. You want to uh, specialize in the things you're good at that you've been trained at that people will pay for. So as you, uh, as you up your skill set, you can get paid more. Your hourly rate is more. That will cover the insurance. I mean, that's why Obamacare was created, was to, to help people in this way. Um, so you're, you're like any business, you have expenses and you're always hustling, but you're always working and you're, you know, making good money and more money over time. And you get to work from home in your jammies. <laughs> that's, that's, you don't have to commute, don't have the traffic, all that stuff. Um, so it's not a bad life. Uh, I personally am not entrepreneurial by nature. I backed into it as I, as I tell my clients, because I'm addicted to eating. <laughs> I, 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 
I want to pay my bills. I want to cover my expenses. So I have to do this because at a certain point in your life, you become too old and too expensive to find a full-time job. So a lot of, I've, I've dealt with people from ages 14 to 84 in my work. Okay. Um, and, and it's and the that's same. What I, that's what I was going to ask. Is this, you know, do you focus on a specific age? Because this, does this impact, does age have an impact or, or the other way around? Does, is this impacting a certain age group versus another? Or is it just kind of really everybody's kind of? It's, it's everybody. It's the same conversation, slightly altered depending on the age. Uh, boomers have have the issue, the age issue problem and ageism is for real. Yes, you okay. do become too old and too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so th there's there's a slightly different strategy for them. But strangely enough, it's the same conversation. It, high school kids who I've worked with, it's the same thing. What do I do? How do I find a job? Who's going to hire me? Yeah, it is. Same thing. Who's so got the most are, fear of, of approaching it in this way? Is, is there a fear level? Oh, huge, there's huge fear. I will have work as long as I want to work because people are so afraid and so ad, adrift about what do I do now? I did all the right things. I got my education. I have a good resume. I know how to write a cover letter. I practice interviewing. I can't get a job anymore. Well, that's because the jobs are going away. I can't get a call back on a job what do I do? What's what's wrong with me? So there's a lot of shame about it, like there's something wrong with me. And, and the, the way I put it is they move the goalposts, but no one told you. They is that a typical more. story that you're, oh, that you're hearing? Every, yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody. Um, they, they're just, they're at a loss. I'm doing all the right things. I sent out 150 resumes and I can't get a call back. What's wrong? different rules wow. you have you want to think in a different way and then behave in a different way and that can open things up for you and you can always find work and it means you're going to have to get better with your social media skills better with your computer skills better with your networking skills not that's this is these are the this is the part of the new skill set required for navigating and flourishing in the 21st century workplace wow yeah well, that was that was really important to say. But now I want to talk about multiple streams of income. Um, but you're still you're talking about multiple streams of income from the same skill set. So, yes. so so how does that work? What do, what do you mean? That's the 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 wagon wheel. Yes, imagine a wagon wheel. Okay. The, the hub is your brand. Okay. And and the income streams come from the brand. They're all related to the brand. So there's no side gigs here. You're not working at Starbucks where you're actually a graphic designer. You're, let's say, a graphic designer and you can use this for anything. Let's say it's graphic designer. So you get a master's degree so you can teach graphic design. Then you're a freelance graphic designer, um, which means you have different clients and you're doing different projects for. Mm -hmm. um, so you're teaching, uh, you're, you're, you're you're a graphic designer, perhaps you uh, run a graphic design department somewhere. So there are different ways to make money that tie in with this. So perhaps you uh, do a YouTube video on how to do a certain type of graphic design. That's an income stream. Um, you write a book. How to, well, I wanted how to get to that in a little bit because you, when our first conversation, you said, you said, Keith, these are the next four things you need to do and you need to do them in this order. And one of them was write a book. I think that was the next thing you said, you yeah. need to write a book. Yeah. And, and why did you tell me I needed to write a book? And I agree with you. I'm, I'm writing a book right now. Well, not at this very second, but why do I need to write a book? <laughs> Credibility. There you go. So Credibility. Is, that, is that like a thing for everybody? No. Okay. Um, Just one, of the nice, one of the nice things about my work is that I can customize it to the individual. So some okay. people need a book, some people don't. Some people need to get a master's degree. Some people need to get a certificate. Don't over-educate, don't overdo okay. it. Some people need to use social media intensely. Some people don't need it at all. So hmm. for example, you have a, a, a cleaning store. Yes, you clean clothes, yeah? You don't need social media for that. 
the you don't need likes from someone in China if you have a cleaning store in a, a suburb in Virginia where you are. Right. What you need is to print flyers and, and hire people to pass them out to the homes and apartment buildings in the neighborhood saying, if you come to our new store, we'll give you a 10% discount on your first order. So it's customizing the marketing for the audience that you're looking to reach. So for example, I'm, my work is available everywhere in the world, but only if you speak English. My ebook, my books, my courses, they're only in English. So is that intentional? Because you mentioned it being intentional. It, that's that's the way it that's the way it worked. That's okay. the way it worked out. Um, so I focus on the English speaking market worldwide. That's that's plenty of income for me. I don't have to be concerned about that. It would be nice to have it in other languages. It's not there yet. Uh, okay. Um, just just so, curious. So you, so you, we, when I work with clients, um, my business card says career packaging and marketing. First, we determine what the package is and then how to market it. And don't, don't spend money you don't need to. Don't spend time you don't need to if the audience isn't there. So you have to determine where your audience lives and customize your outreach or marketing to them. Whatever, whatever combination of things that means, social media, whatever, um, it's customized. You're taking care of, you're contributing to the people in your market. Where do you find them? Where do they live on social media or otherwise? And this is a lifelong task. This is part of what you're going to be doing now. Two jobs, what you do, and marketing your services all the time. So in the past, you know, I was comfortable with a 40-hour work week. This doesn't sound like a 40 hour work week anymore. This sounds like more like a 50 plus hour work week and some weekend time uh, included. Yep. Um, am I am I on target with that or? Yeah, I, I, I would question first that 40 hour week concept because <laughs> people work a lot longer than that for companies because they're trying to be good and be good loyal workers and keep the job. And if the boss needs you to come in on Saturday or work late or not take the vacation this week because they need you, you're gonna do that. So if you, if you total it up, plus the commuting, um, it's a lot more than 40 hours. But yes, this is your own business, your own career. Um, I, I don't count the hours. Um, and the, my job is to be as efficient as possible. So for anyone, the more you upskill, the better you get at what you do, the less time you have to spend doing it. So if you hire a newbie to do something on cloud, yes, it'll take them 18 hours. A professional who's a veteran who's done it for years can do it in two hours. You're gonna pay more for that, but that means if I'm that professional and I've done it in two hours, I've made a lot more money per hour and I can take the rest of the day off because you as my client were taken care of. Yes, you don't care how many hours I put in. You care that I delivered what you needed on time and on budget or under budget. So, so that's the game, so to, so to speak, is how efficiently can I do the things I need to do for the client and take care of them. You're not gonna pat me on the back because I worked 18 hours. Uh, this, it's not, it's, you don't reward for effort, you reward for results. And, that's and that definitely you, is a, a paradigm shift or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, so that's the job. And I'm, I don't count how many hours because I actually work less the older I get because I'm more efficient and my rates go up. Yeah, <laughs> so I spend less time and make more money. And I have in, in my wheel, uh, a lot of passive income as well. So, you know, I, I sit and watch Netflix and make money. It's a nice place <laughs> to be. Wait a second, I'm going to do that. What? <laughs> you could make money watching Netflix? Cool. Uh, uh, I, the money's coming in because, okay. because I'm constantly um, promoting what I do. Um, and I get, I have I, uh, my, the social media platform I use for my market, okay, is LinkedIn. And I have over 33,000 followers on LinkedIn. Um, and that keeps growing. And the more people that know about me and the more things I post, like this podcast, um, the more work I'm going to get. Um, so and I hope that your your network grows as a result of, of oh, being yes. on the podcast. I hope so. And it will. And it will. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. so with that being as, as the case, um, what do you want to tell listeners, either live or 
when this goes to YouTube or when this goes to, you know, to Spotify, you know, what do you need to tell them? Um, if you can't, well, let's start at the beginning. Follow me on LinkedIn. Um, okay. You can then email me or, or send me a LinkedIn message. Um, and find out about courses. If there are any courses that, uh, and the courses, by the way, through Pierce College are free. How about that? Uh, Pierce College gets a grant from the state. So we offer the courses for free, which is great if you're not working. I mean, that's, <laughs> you don't have money to spend on that. You're spending money on trying to find groceries or trying to find money for groceries. So that would, if it costs money, not, not, would not be a first priority. So, so you can find out if we have courses that are virtual. Um, you can work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You can buy my books. You can look at the three LinkedIn learning courses um, and we can correspond. Um, so I would, I would start with that because so much of my philosophy, so to speak, is in the books and in the LinkedIn learning courses. And the, the, the books are on, uh, on Amazon and not expensive. So I would, I would say that way to start shifting how you think and how you behave. Um, and it's the future and can be the future for a lot of people and they can relax a little uh, on the one hand, knowing they're not dependent on one employer. And then of course there's the angst about, oh, now I have to learn how to market myself. People don't like that. And I'm sorry they don't, but this is, this is what we have to do to flourish in the 21st century in the workplace of this country. But, but I, just to add value to that part, I think just with anything else, the more you do it, the easier it gets, the less fear you have in doing it. And so I, I think going through your course, you know, and becoming competent in the process, you then gain the confidence in doing it. Um, yeah. And so I, I, I think of, of anything that, that may be the biggest learning curve, that marketing component, but mm -hmm. once you get it, you know, just like you know, just like when I teach in the college, once they get it, they own it. My students yeah. own it, and exactly. they can do it without thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I I always I, I let my clients and my students off the hook. I said I don't expect you to be a brilliant marketer. Just be good enough, and have enough contacts, and stay in touch with them, so people are aware that you've gotten a certificate in this, a certificate in that, whatever, so that you can be of more service to them. So I I don't care if you like it. This is what you have to learn to do. At least competent at it. That's all. It's something you're going to need for the rest of your life. We're not looking for brilliance. We're looking for uh, it becoming a practice and it becoming second nature for you. So you're doing this all the time, and you're always getting work. Which is the which is the goal? <laughs> which is the goal? Yeah. That's which it. Is the goal. Yeah. That's it. Well, I appreciate this conversation. It was totally awesome. And so all, all those things, your Amazon, your Pearson College, your LinkedIn learning, I'm going to be putting in, you know, the description on YouTube and the description on Spotify and Anchor so that people can easily find you, right. um, get in contact with you. And I, I, sh I, I maybe I don't want to put this in an awkward situation, but you should probably give them a discount because I heard it on the, the Question Guy podcast, but that's on you. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to do that. Um, be pretty cool though. Um, again, thank you so much for spending the last 30 minutes with me on the Question Guy podcast. If